topics. Okay, I think we should get going here. Our next topic is we're going to talk about grafting apple trees. And I said, why would you graft an apple tree? And I'm like, that's, I'm going to give you my answer, Todd. Then I'll hear yours. Okay, I want to hear yours. This is what happens. I'll just say, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> this is what happens a lot. You move into a house and you have an apple or a crab apple tree. Um, you want to plant a superior variety, let's say like Honeycrisp, but you don't have room to plant another mm -hmm. apple tree on your on your existing crab or apple in your landscape. So voila, you can find a honey crisp tree in the neighborhood or a, you can buy a scion and you can create your own honey crisp branch on your apple it's a tough one to, to surpass i'm going to try though um that's a great way another way would be is um say for example a loved one had planted a tree and it's a variety that's not real common anymore and, and it's an mm. okay eating variety mm -hmm. but they passed on and you'd like to remember them you can take cuttings from that, graft it on, and kind of keep that memory going. So that that's that's another way too. Not as fun as yours, but no, it's you know, uh, more fun. I'll tell you, that's a really. If you look, it's like uh, some of these like uh, catalogs, like the old St. Lawrence nurseries. You look at their apple listing of cultivars. It's over a hundred. There's lots of heirloom varieties that have you know, some special quality, special flavors to them. And you know, you're not going to find a lot of these varieties uh, from your local garden center. But uh, there, yeah, there's a lot of heirlooms that are, or sometimes, Todd, I get the question, can you please tell me what variety this is? This apple? I love these apples, but I don't want variety this. Well, you don't have to know the variety. You can just take a cutting from it. And uh, there you go. You got your you got your own uh, secret mysterious variety that tastes great. I always tell them it's a Tom Kell. I say it kind of with dignity. It's, a, it's an older variety called Tom Kell. It's not very common. Really great apple. <laughs> and um, and they usually buy that, and I, and I go on. Okay, Todd, uh, now we're done with the nonsense. Let's get some serious discussion here. Right. So please welcome Todd Wyman. He's our agricultural natural resources agent in Cass County. Todd, welcome to the forum. Thanks, Tom. Welcome. And thanks for not leaving while I'm talking. Um, <laughs> What, one thing before we get started here, um, I, I want to show that Tom did provide medical um, equipment in case I do cut myself or someone else during this. So this, we're not promoting this brand, but um, we do have one in case someone were to get hurt here. We'll get started here with the basics, and, and, and keep in mind that what I what I described to you might be slightly different, might be exactly the same as what you've done or learned, or, or maybe you don't know at all. But there's more than one way of doing this. Um, three basic parts of the apple tree that you should know are the roots, obviously the bottom portion, the sign, and the graft. And when you see an apple tree like this, you might think, oh, it's just one tree. But really, there are two trees combined into one here. This, this apple, a uh, state fair apple it's called, is grafted on to a semi-dwarf rootstock. The semi-dwarf rootstock is very like, more than likely a crab apple variety of some sort or a variety that has no flavor but does very well in our climate here. Um, many people will say, well, I want a nice apple tree, but I don't want such a giant apple tree like a standard rootstock. So I would say a semi-dwarf or a dwarfing rootstock. And also the standard rootstocks, sometimes I find that they have a hard time surviving here in, in North Dakota. Here. Uh, many people say too, when, when is a great time to, to start this? I'd like to do this. Can I do it any time of the year? The best time that I've found is um, April, May time, um, but, but it's not exact. Plants can't read and therefore um, you could always go like, oh, when the crappies start biting in the, in the spring or when the, the tulips are three inches tall or find some other type of little um, oh, story that you want to think of. But, but those are also accurate times for when, when to start doing this. The techniques um, that you can use different knives. The biggest thing with the knives, they have to be sharp. Um, laser sharpened, surgical steel. Um, these these things will cut through bone basically. Um, they, there is there is you never grab the dull knife. Um, that's a sure way to go into the into an emergency room or hospital. There's a number of different shapes and sizes. I like one just a regular. Looks like a little regular pocket knife, and on the end it has a little real dull edge. And this dull edge I use to help pry open the the, the the dull edge I use to, 
help pry back the bark a little bit because if I use the other edge I would basically just slice the um, bark right apart. Now if you look at this knife that's little dull edge is right on the on the opposite side. Now I'm not um, oh, comfortable enough to use a knife like this for popping it open without it slamming shut on my fingers and so um, I'll use this to graft and cut but when I start prying back the bark I'll use something like this with a nice little dull edge on it. The first first graft we're going to try is, or we're going to do, is called a T bud. Um, what I what I like to do is take, I make a capital T shape cut into into my my rootstock. Now this is quite large for what I usually do, but the ones I ordered didn't come in, and, and this is the smallest tree I could find in the state. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll make a little, just for demonstration purposes, make a little cut right here. Usually I use um, newer wood. But for this, I'm just going to do this. See, look, it cuts right into that without a problem. I'll get rid of this. This is where Tom's Band-Aid comes in handy. Never cut toward yourself. I also brought a loppers along because, um, as you know, applewood is very hard. Someone will clean that up or just leave it till next year if I get invited back. And I'll just kind of make a nice capital T-shaped cut in there. Close this end if you want to keep your fingers. Hopefully I made it deep enough. I'll use both hands because I, I can do that. And you see this nice light green colored wood underneath here, right underneath the bark? That's your phloem. That's the living tissue. You don't want to damage that. And, and time is kind of of an essence here, so we're not going to just, I'm just going to um, make it and I'll describe it a little bit here. So for this, I'm going to find a nice little bud on here. This one is not what I want. Can be a little picky. As you see, oops, I cut that bud right in half. Fortunately, I have another one right here. Also notice too, and, and maybe you can't see, but I do have clean, disease-free wood. Um, very important. You don't want to graft um, anything that's diseased or filled with insects onto something else. Take my little non-sharp end. That was not a terminal bud. Does it matter? Um, this wasn't a terminal bud, no. Um, you could use a terminal bud or you could drop it on the floor like that. <laughs> I'll get another one. Remember, I can't chew gum and talk, and so if you say anything to right. me, no, I, I can't. Um, no more questions. I, I'm more clumsy. Please ask questions. It, it helps with um, the comic relief here. But I'd be, I'm a little picky with it. I, I, I don't, um, I guess as far as a terminal bud, you, you could use one. I haven't here. Slide that in here. Same orientation that it was growing before. You want the, the, the phloem to touch each other, so they're nice and snug in here. And now, you can use, there's, there's a ton of different types of tape out there. Um, I, I just bought a couple, and this is more, this type right here is more of a parafilm wax type, and it's very pliable, and it will rot according to the instructions. So I get that a little bit lower, and I just start snugging it up like this. And in theory, it'll rot off once this starts to grow. Now, get up to here, get it above the bud. Some people go over the bud a little bit. You want to make sure all the xylem is covered. And you can tie it on there. Ideally, what you want now is once this starts to grow, you have success, it'll start to grow. You clip this top part off right here. And this will become the new leader. This here will, you, and then you, you, from here on up is the new variety of, of apples that you get. So the top part will be this, and the bottom will be that. Now let's say you just like, you know what? I just want to mess with my relatives or my friends. They're gone for the weekend. They have an all red apple. I want to put purple, yellow, whatever kind of apple on here. Well, you can do that too. They're gone for the weekend. Um, what I would do is the right tool take and cut nice clean cut now that would have damaged this wood or the xylem but we're not worried about it right on the ends there 
This is where the Band-Aid part comes in again. Oops. It's not supposed to split like that, but we'll try it again. Not really good at piano or anything, so um, that helps. Some people take a little um, a little hammer and tap on there, but um, I've found that um, I'm a little bit overzealous. What I've made is a nice cleft graft here, or cleft here now for um, a cleft graft. I'm going to take this one right here. I want to match it up to about the same diameter if you can to get both sides. I can cut it at this high enough, but I'll try here. Cut it at an angle. Go to the other side. This inner wood really hasn't a lot of value to it. Now, line this up. A little bit too long yet. I'll have to whittle on it. As you can see, the xylem and the and actually the phloem, but the xylem is good right here. This is our part that we really want to take with them right here. So it should be the same diameter. And the more you do this, especially if it's your friend or neighbor's tree, the better you'll get at it. And um, get that lined up there. Get your. You can use electrician's tape too. Um, and that is supposed to rot off in time. Masking tape does not. But this is not masking tape. This is um, special grafting masking tape, and that's supposed to rot off. Um, but just remember, plants can't read, and therefore, you might have to um, see how it goes. Now, this here one might be a little bit misleading. You won't always know if this actually took until the plant starts to bud. And if this one starts budding, and um, everything's looking good, and it's been on there for a few months, and, and nothing's going wrong with it, this is budding, this is budding, I'd say you're great, but don't be out here just kind of, oh, I wonder if it's still on, because um, that, that will not be good for what you want to do. This here one, a little bud, and so with this branch, I would just leave this branch, and it, we'd have a brand new variety of apples. Like, well, how come they're all red? And this one's yellow. What happened? And then you can make up any kind of story you want. They won't know. Or if you want to just, you know, put a little bud here, you cut this off as this grows, from here on up will be a brand new thing. Um, people say, well, how many different types can you put on an apple tree? That I don't know, but I've heard up to 14 with success, um, which is a lot of varieties. And um, one nice thing what I've done here is I've grafted um, this um, State Fair apple, which is an earlier um, apple, probably late August, August sometime, with a variety that's done after good hard frost in September. So what, in theory, what will happen is, I'll have apples for an extended period of time. You know, I'll get the earlier flush. It's like, oh yeah, apples, this is great. And later on, I'll have a different apple. It'll be nice and fresh from the tree where these are starting to become overripe and, and such. And um, that's um, just something that you can kind of consider too. What, what you want to do is graft onto varieties that you like to, to eat though. Um, as far as um, can you graft onto, um, Crab apples, yes, you can. A lot of the a lot of trees are grafted, especially dogo crab. And there's a number of different crab apples that you can graft onto. I prefer grafting onto smaller trees, maybe about oh two and a half, three, four feet high. Um, seems to be trees that I like that I have the most success with. Um, people say, well, how can you get good at this? Practice and take your time and patient. Um, don't drink a lot of caffeine beforehand, so you're shaky. Um, don't have anything to drink and and just just be ready to go and, and have a good time, but but remember, these knives are extremely sharp. As you saw when I was doing it, it just flipped right off. Um, good thing Tom wasn't there. Who knows what would have happened? But um, I want to talk about like just one quick story. We got time here yet? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, when I the very first time I did this was in South Dakota about 18 years ago, and um, you have to be very careful with people that come to if you if you go to a, if you teach a class people that are overconfident and and they they portray that they know a lot but they really don't and so I had a man come in he had grafted apple trees since before I was born and all this and so I had beautiful 
knives from Sweden. They, they were fantastic, just fantastic knives. I had gotten some money and I bought them, handed them out to the class. We all started grafting. He pulled out a buck knife and immediately sliced open his hand, blood everywhere. I almost passed out. And so now um, when people, when I put on this class, I do not have anyone bring their own knives. You just can't. Um, I'm not too big on having kids there just because, you know, kids want to grow up and have their fingers. But, um, you know, you get adults in your class and, and they're, they're fairly competent and not shaky, um, I would say fine, but, but don't let them use their own knives. Um, disease free. And then also what Tom had talked about earlier too, um, limited space. Um, there's an ex excellent example. If you have, for example, just one tree in your yard, and it's a crab apple tree or a regular eating apple, and you want to do something where you get more apples, um, this is a, this is a great way to, to start that. And so that's something to do. Um, let's see here. Oh, um, too bad, uh, too bad. I can't quiz people, but, um, one question and then I'll answer it is, um, when you have an apple orchard, if, has anyone ever had the opportunity to go and pick your own apples, which is, is fun, especially a great family event. You go and eat apples and pick them. And it, you get way too many. You never eat them all. But anyways, you look down these beautiful rows of apple trees, and then all of a sudden you see, what is that? It's just, why is that little tree in there? It's, an, it's a crab apple or something. It's for pollination. Um, the, the, these are not trees that are self-pollinating. They need another another apple tree to pollinate. And that's the thing too. Say you live someplace and there were no apples anywhere and you only had room for one apple, you could graft onto this a crab apple, just a little crab apple even, and you would be perfectly fine. The bees would come. I know a friend of mine did that. Um, and then the thing was, he goes, gee, that, you know, his, his wife later on, goes, gee, that one branch, it always has these little terrible apples and she cut it off. And then the next year, well, there were no apples. So yeah, you, know, you explain it to them, and I think they got divorced. But um, you know, it's one of those things where um, it wouldn't have happened if, if they would have known about this. So to save your marriage, I would suggest that you learn how to graft. Yeah, you had some communication issues. Communication issues. All right? Is there any yeah. question, okay, or else sure. I, I, I got some more? But or I'll, let's maybe yeah. answer some questions okay. first. So, uh, uh, if the leader was broken off, can you graft a new bud onto it? Okay, so it, you'll say the leader's broken off, a deer or neighbor kid climbed this and broke it in half or whatever. Um, could you graft on? What I would do is I would clean it up. If it's all raggedy and stuff, and I would clip it, and then I would look at it. And I might actually even go further down, just in case disease got in here. And I'd put a little, like a little tea bud. Um, if it was nice and narrow like this, I'd put one of these cleft grafts on there. There's also a bark graft. Let's say you had a large branch like this and it broke off from who knows what. Um, you can cut that off with a chainsaw or, or the best you can and you drive, and I, and I don't remember the terminology of what the tool is called, but it's like a, it's like a wedge. And you drive that in there and you could put on each end of those wedges um, basically a cleft graft, just like we did here. And many times, some if you have a, if you, for example, inherit an old orchard, is like, oh, these trees are dying, but they were so nice. And um, I've seen this before, where they've cut them and they've grafted onto those, and in the hopes that um, something strong would take over. And, and usually, my understanding is they leave one of them, but they might put on several, and just to get something going, they, they and they'll keep the best one. And so that, so yeah. You know, that bark, uh, that bark graft is described in the last page of the handout. There's a drawing there for you. For, and that's like Todd's seen for large stock. Right. You do that. Yeah, a, a large tree. Yeah. How about uh, are Dogo crab apple trees still available? Oh, sure. Yeah, the nurseries, nurseries Where? many times carry them. Almost any nursery I would think would have them, unless something's happened in the last couple of years where they're no longer available. I would just go to your local nursery and say, can you order me a dogo crab? And they'll say, well, they were all wiped out. No, the, no. I, I'm sure they could get them. I, I don't know yeah. unless something weird right. has happened. Nothing's weird happened. It's possible. Yeah. I don't know everything, like Tom. Well, know. no, that's not, don't say that. Dolgo, that's the for D-O-L-G-O. -O. It's very common crab apple. And I've seen them in, uh, I've seen them in nurseries in North Dakota. So just, they're widely available. They're, they're a nice, nice hearty crab apple for here it's yeah. a good yeah it's, it's uh, a good one yeah. yeah it's yeah it's okay how about uh can you graft a winter apple onto a summer apple i'm not sure what what that means i 
a probably a, a winter apple would be a late ripening apple oh, that yeah. you could eat the fruits in during yeah. the winter time. You sure could. Like yeah, a, yeah, well, yeah. That that would be that would be um, an ideal thing to do. Like for example, um, when I first planted apple trees at my parents' home and they started to produce a thousand apples per tree, I'm guessing I went out there um, late June for right after a June drop, and, they, and that's when they're not when the when they'll drop in the in June July time. Um, the apples that are not pollinated or fertilized will fall off the tree and everyone panics but still after that there are a tremendous amount of apples and I would go through and pick those all off until there's only like 200 per tree and they get quite large so so you can graft a winter apple on a summer apple but Todd can you graft among different species like how about can I graft a plum on an apple I would no no if you can't. They they just don't. The genetics are too far apart. Um, if you could, I mean, it would be fantastic. But for one thing, and it's a different kind of wood altogether. Um, it's just um, it's just not gonna work. Now, like your citrus, you can. I'm not all that familiar. I've never done it, but I have seen citrus where they've kind of messed with them a little bit. But um, apples and apples, you know, and you know, different varieties of apples I've seen down there, but not. Um, you don't see a grapefruit no. on an apple tree or anything like That's that. That's right. They're, they're not compatible. Right. And we don't want. We don't need to talk about citrus. This is for North Dakota gardeners. Right. Right. Uh, but how about even a pear and an apple? Now that they're, I don't know. They're, they're um, pretty close. Though. They are close. I don't think it's gonna work though. But um, you know, one time um, I was down in Brookings and I saw that they had grafted a lilac onto an ash stump and it was blooming. Now, the thing with that is, though, it only lasted a one season. You know, it's kind of messed with it, and, it, it, and who knows what else it did with it. So, you know, if, if it did work, it would be so temporary, it would be kind of a huge waste of time. So I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. How about is, is when you look at – when you choose a scion, is the winter hardiness of the scion in, an important consideration? Um, maybe I'll answer that. As far as winter hardiness, yes, but also you want to – you want to keep in mind that um, the storage, say you go out in the fall and, and you harvest your scion wood, you want to keep that wood between 32 and 40 degrees, like maybe in a, ref a refrigerator crisper if you're not married, um, something like that. And um, if it gets below that, you start to get tissue damage and, and things have real problems with, with, sur with um, surviving. So I would say um, storage is good. Um, but at this point, though, Todd, let's say uh, they really like – Cranny Smith or something that's not hardy in North Dakota. If I grafted a Granny Smith on a Dogo crab, would it survive North Dakota? Yeah, I've never seen that. I, I don't believe that it would. It just isn't tough enough to, um, you know, for the climate that it's grown in, it would be fine. But here, it'd be either too cold or there's something that it, there's a reason they're not doing it for, for right now. And um, I would say no. Right. Yeah. That's It'd be nice, but but you, you can't have not. every you can't have everything. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Sorry, our winter's too brutal. Uh, can you tea bud graft on lateral shoots or just on the main trunk? I prefer to do lateral shoots or the main trunk if it's smaller. This one is pretty big. I like to do it when the trees are a lot younger. Um, this tree is is a little bit older, but I'm just using it for demonstration purposes. If the if it's um, younger, more supple tissue, you have a better chance of it taking. Okay, uh, speaking of taking, what type of grafting have you had the most success with? Uh, the most success I've had is with, with tea budding. Yeah, I've, I've had the most yeah, success right. with that. Um, cleft, I think what happens is, like you saw me, it's like, oh, it's not quite perfect, not quite perfect. I think by the time I'm done whittling it down to the perfect size, it actually dries out. I, I think that I'm too slow with it. I don't, I don't do it all. It's just I do it once a year, so I'm not very that, that proficient in it or fast okay. at it. So can you uh, graft onto a 25-year-old crab apple tree? Or sure. You know, yeah, sure. You know, even like let's say it was one that, um, I don't know, somebody ran, hit it with a truck and the branches are all broken. You could take a chainsaw or something, cut it, and do like um, a bark graft on there. You could try that. Or right. even just a little branch. Like, um, you know, I, I prefer the younger wood, but you could do older wood. It's just easier to work with the younger wood. Here's a situation where the rabbits took off all the bark all the way around about two and a half feet off the ground. So the girl did two and a half feet off the ground. Can the upper buds be grafted onto the lower trunk? 
that'd be called a bridge graft. And I've tried that and have and have failed every single time um, whenever I've done that. So I've, I've heard of people that have done that and it's been successful, but I've, I've never had it work for me. Um, I don't know why I'm not getting it to work, but yeah, um, it's hard. I, I've seen that, but not. this tree is only one and a half inches in diameter too. So it's a pretty young tree. Yeah. Just get a start a new, just buy a new one. Or just make the cut. You got two and a half yeah. feet. Oh, if it's two and a half feet, you could graft right below that. Sure. Yeah, just put a you can yeah. put one of those bud uh, things right, right. Uh, just you know, remove the damaged tissue and just put a bud graft right yep. in there. Right? That would be perfect. Yeah. How many years before a bud graft bears fruit? Uh, it kind of depends. Um, sometimes I've actually cut off um, all the little um, spurs, and I've grafted those on, and and you could get an apple. <laughs> probably that year, but that's cheating. Um, it just depends. Uh, it takes forever. It seems like sometimes if, if, for example, if this were to take off and this branch right here, I would say maybe uh, with my luck, um, five or six years at the earliest. Okay. I just don't have, um, whenever I've done trees that they just take forever, I'd say five or six years. I know that some people have cheated and put things on them and made them go faster, but I don't do that. So. Okay. Okay, so you start to be patient. Yeah, patient. This is a patient sport right here. Can you graft onto a flowering crab? Yes, you sure can. Yeah, any kind, any kind, kind of crab, crab apple tree. Yeah. Here's a con, uh, comment. Uh, top from Jim Wall. Top working tends to increase winter hardiness by about one hardiness zone level. Wow. So if it's a marginal tree you might get away with it too. sure so like if, if jim said it it's got to be true it's probably i true. believe it yeah, yeah. it's a man of experience and knowledge yeah jim is um quite excellent at grafting so now i'm even more nervous than thomas <laughs> at the whole grafting world watching me yeah, and we're keeping this all of a sudden i just drift away yeah how about uh uh let's see if we got let's stay with the grafting as much as we can okay yeah. we're just gonna we're gonna veer off a little bit into general stuff here todd you got a recommendation about when's the best time and what's the best method of pruning an apple tree? What's um, the best time? I've always told that when you prune a tree, it was when the saw is sharp. But as far as apple trees, That's I would right. say that um, you don't want to do it when the fire blight. And so don't mm -hmm. do it when it's actively growing. Like if you're going to prune it, I'd probably prune it now yeah. or this fall after it gets mm -hmm. kind of miserable. Tomorrow. But um, the best day is tomorrow. 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 That's but the day after won't work. No, you have to do it before the growth begins. Do yeah. it now. Do it now. But and not in the summer. The best time. And uh, the best method for pruning an apple tree, well, you just, that's a, that's, we don't have enough time for all that. Just open up the tree to get more sunlight, more air into it. One thing with that, too, is um, when you, whenever you prune a tree, I, I don't take off more than 25% of what I guess the leaf area is. So like a, a good killer of trees is a is a, a man who just got a brand new chainsaw and he's gonna prune his tree. He might as well just make one cut at the bottom because it's it's done. So. How about those rabbits are a problem, Todd? Can we save a tree that's chewed by rabbits around the whole stem by wrapping it? No, it, the, if the well if the if the living tissue, the phloem, is damaged underneath, it, it's too late. Okay. Now if they just chewed a little hole here. There's a good chance that'll fill right in, but if it's all the way around and the green tissue is eaten off, no. That's right. That tissue desiccates rapidly. We're talking minutes, yeah. so you can't get out there and put some saran wrap and save it. it doesn't work. Um, how about growing apples as a shrub? Have you ever thought of that, Todd? Or I, I've seen where they've taken and grown apples alongside of a building, kind of a, almost like an art form. Um, espalier. Es, espalier. I can barely say it, but um, <laughs> hey, it's fascinating. And, um, and and I'm assuming it's dwarfing rootstock. Maybe not, but I'm assuming it is. You have a little, maybe every eight feet, there's this little apple tree and, and horizontal branches, and it's right along, all on wires. Um, fantastic. As far as growing as a shrub, I don't know why you'd want to. Um, the problem yeah. would be is um, it'd be a mess. Always certain. damage. Um, I wouldn't do that. No. The other thing to keep uh, aware of is that the apple trees that you um, that you plant are grafted, and so like if you're just relying on suckers, then that's going to be um, that's it's usually a doggo crab or a, a super hardy crab that's the rootstock. 
Yep. And it's not, uh, it's, it's a rootstock that will create um, low quality fruit. So you don't want to be relying on apple suckers. You should trim out the suckers at the base. They're not going to yeah. create quality fruit. Well, one thing I was going to add quickly yes, too, please. if we have a minute. Um, yes, we do. When let's say you had um, a Zestar tree or whatever type you like, and you, you saved all the seeds from that and you planted them all and you had 300 little apple trees growing, none of them are going to come true as a Zestar. None of them. They've all cross pollinated with something else in order for that to be fertile, and they are not going to come true. Will they be great? Mm, I'd say you have one out of 164,000 chances of it actually becoming a tree to keep. So if you had that much room, take the chance. But if you don't, 164,000 trees. That's what we did. Any Hanson Research that's Farm. That's a lot of trees. That's a lot of trees. Yeah. So if you got the room, it's a lot of pruning. Yeah. A lot of pruning. It's a lot of work. How about, you ever, hey, Todd, have you ever planted comfrey or rhubarb at the base of an apple tree? I, I haven't, but I have put um, flowers or strawberries at them at the base. Um, I think that when you put like little flowers or other plants with, um, with them, it's kind of nice. So I, I haven't ever planted oh, they, rhubarb. They put, the comfrey or rhubarb would not add anything to the apple oh, tree. Oh, no, right? no, it wouldn't. No. Um, but I have yeah. put plants yeah. underneath a tree if I, I misunderstood. I no, it's not no, gonna I don't know what they're after. They're, I recommend yeah. shredded bark mulching. It's That's nice the best yeah. thing to go with. And the lawnmower hits it, it's not as messy. How about putting a Ziploc sandwich bag over an apple while the apple's ripening? Does that protect it from wasp, et cetera? No, not a Ziploc, it'll get all moldy. You can purchase or, or make i guess probably purchase to start there are um bags for protection for apples i've seen those um it's kind of fun if you got a lot of free time <laughs> but um i i don't know i i wouldn't do it but um i have seen where people have purchased a special it's not it's not a, it's not a it's a, a bag where airflow gets through though if you put like a bag over it, i think it'll just rot in there yeah one thing uh technically you can use a ziploc oh. bag but you have to cut the bottom the bottom oh. sides of each one to, just for like you say Todd otherwise the condensation will lead to rot. Oh thanks I didn't realize that. Yeah thanks. so yeah you don't want to but wasp aren't the problem we're, we want to protect the fruit from like apple maggots that's really what we're after but that, that gets to be a lot of work so. Yeah. So if you, if, you don't, if you need a hobby there you go. And you got to put it on when the fruit's like the size of a nickel you got to put it on young. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of work. Sounds uh, horrible actually. How soon would you start pruning an apple tree after planting? Like after about three years? Is that a good time to get started? I would look at it the second year. The first year, when you buy your tree, I try to get one. Well, make sure it doesn't have any damage or disease or insects on it. It looks fairly healthy. The first year, I like to leave it alone. People are always picking and stabbing their plants. First year, I leave it alone. The second year, if there's like oh, a branch that's rubbing or something really bad going to happen. I might clip it off. And the third year, I'll start to clean it up a bit. So yeah, probably the third year, but the second year I'll start. But the first year, no, I don't, I don't bother with it at all. Uh, Jim Wall has another comment from his uh, ex days of esteem, esteem experience. He reports that Jack Carter, a former agronomist at NDSU, had more than 100 apple varieties on one tree. Wow. In his yard. There you go. That's a grafting yeah. champion. Right? Can you imagine what the pie tastes like? Wow. <laughs> I don't know, Jim. Jim, I don't know if we're going to – I guess yeah, we Jim have to said trust it Jim. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Whatever about, he says, we're just going to assume it's true. How That's about what we're is doing this today. true? I got something Did else. Jim say it? Uh, this isn't from Jim. Okay. This is from a mysterious person from Nelson County. Oh, all right. Do you know why someone would plant garlic underneath their apple tree? No. You know, maybe for rabbit for protection or, or something, pests? but no, of course. You know, it it, garlic work. is um, they, they like full sun too. So if, if you're growing it, uh, you garlic, you're not gonna do well. Yeah, I, it's not gonna. It's I not gonna be that. very effective. But no. they're probably that's probably why they're doing it. Is they're probably trying to repel, repel, repel a pest, kids or something. But uh, the best repellent of a pest is a. Uh, Exclusion, like a physical barrier. Right. Chicken right? wire. There you go. Uh, hardware mesh. Much more effective than garlic. Uh, let's just scroll through any last questions here. Uh, 
uh, as far as, again, as far as graph compatibility, the, the closer they are within this, it's among species, the better. So otherwise, right. even if it does take in the long run, it's going to be very weak and likely to fall off. Um, I don't see anything else. Uh, we're going to shut Great. it down there. Okay, Todd, thank you very much for the demonstration and you Thanks came away safe. We're so glad we could have to call 911. <laughs> but you know, I did it so that if I cut, it would only take two fingers off. That's it wasn't a whole hand here. So That's right. But you wouldn't give a couple fingers for the spring fever. That's, I would that's give two fingers for the spring fever. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one finger. It's two. <laughs> and also, maybe last thing, if you're interested in drafting, you know, read, read more about it. Read that publication. Like, now's the time. Now's the time. This is a timely situation right yeah and i, and I have Make a little now. little quick commercial um, please april 25th um doing a pollinator workshop so check my website and you get more information on that but april 25th emphasis on honeybees and flowers that attract pollinators may 30th a little bit late but we do have some apple trees coming that we're going to mess with and they will be ready to graft on may 30th so we'll have a grafting workshop may 30th and for information they can contact you Yep. Again, Todd Weinman is at uh, Cass County Extension Office. Yep. And I'll just type in his. Weinman's impossible to spell. Don't even try it. I gave up years ago. But, um, or else you can give me a call, 701-241-5707. Perfect, right two, there. Okay. That's better because. <clears throat> yeah, that's the way to go. Contact that's just him via perfect. email. And uh, that's good. Okay. Thank you, Todd. Oh, thanks for having me. Thank Sorry about the mess. <laughs>